My name is John McKeon. I'm the moderator for the Teradata River, and today we have with us Scott Nicholson, Senior Data Scientist for LinkedIn. Scott, welcome to the river. Hey, John. How's it going? It's going great. LinkedIn, 100 million members. That's a lot of members. That's a lot of data. And Scott is going to be speaking at the Partners Conference coming up and talking about big data, talking about the data scientists and what they're doing and the new insights that they're gaining. Scott, tell me a little bit about the data attitude at LinkedIn. Sure. Well, the first thing is that we are an extremely data-driven company. I think in terms of the products that you see on the website, you can clearly see that we're looking at data very clearly there. But just when you look at the executives making decisions about how to change products, what products to design, how to make strategic decisions about the business, sitting down with our product leads and executives here, it's very clear that we think about data first. We do make decisions with our gut, but we realize that there's a lot of power in using data to inform yourself about how your business is performing and the types of action that you need to take to make your business more effective. And also what's most important for us is to make sure that our users are happy and having a good experience on the website. So Scott, how do you go from data to decisions then? Sure. Let me tell you a little bit about how the data team is structured because we might do it a little bit differently depending on the team. We have an analytics team and it's broken down into two teams. There's the product analytics team. The product analytics team is really focused on uh, prototyping data different products that take the data exhaust of 100 million people and turn them into value for our users. So for example, we have a tool called People You May Know, which is a connection recommendation tool that's been on our website for several years. And what we're doing is we're making inferences on people that you might be professionally connected to and suggesting them to you as a professional contact. One of our latest products is LinkedIn Skills, which uses the free text on our 100 million members' profiles and extracts the different skills that people might have so that I can say, well, I'm interested in learning a new skill, let's say Hadoop, and using my network as a way to understand who in my network knows Hadoop, who in my second degree network knows Hadoop. So really at the end of the day, the product analytics team, what they're doing is they're taking that data and they're trying to build new products out of it. People like Pete Skomarok, Monica Rigotti, and Daniel Tunkelang, who leads that team, they're the ones who are really driving those, those new products. The team that I'm on, which is run by Manu Sharma, uh, we're called Decision Sciences. And we're less focused on developing product prototypes. And what we're thinking about is what kind of data insights can we pull from the data that allow the product leads and executives to make the best decisions possible about how the business is performing, how users are engaging with the website, and any other sort of cross-website, cross-product, or horizontal question that allows us to better understand what our users need in terms of us providing them more value. What's interesting about, I think, our team, the decision sciences team, is that we're not a traditional BI or business analytics team. Those types of teams, they tend to be more service-oriented, where they're downstream, there's kind of a queue of requests that come in and team services requests. Our team is positioned as a full partner on the product team. So with engineers, web developers, designers, product managers, our data scientists are right there sitting in the room when new products are being discussed. Our team is really involved in making sure that we're making good decisions with analytics rather than just performing analytical tasks, which I think has historically been the role of, of analysts. So, Scott, what about the question of open source? What are you doing in the open source space? We've been very active in open source for years now. We actually I have to look up exactly when it was first open source, but Project Voldemort is uh, one of our biggest open source projects. What Voldemort is, is it's a, a distributed key value cache, essentially. So what we can do is whenever, whenever you go to any page on LinkedIn, if you think about it for a second, you can think about some of the really difficult calculations that have to occur in order for us to present some of this data for you. For example, deciding whether or not a person is in your second or third degree network. And so what Voldemort allows us to do is store all of this data, all the data that we need to present you a good experience, across many, many, many machines. So when you load the page, you can get the fastest load time and experience possible. 
So what we can do is we use tools like Hadoop, where we do actually contribute to the Hadoop project as well, and then the layers on top of Hadoop like Pig or Hive to extract insights. And then what we can do is we can surface those insights in our key value store Voldemort, and then those insights can be pulled by any web application on the website. So on our actual production website, we're hitting the Voldemort stores. When we're building lightweight web applications just to kind of explore data, we're also hitting Voldemort. We have some other open source tools on a website called, the website address is sna-projects.com, and those are open source projects from our search network and analytics teams. Scott, quick question here. What about any of the innovation techniques uh, you had mentioned earlier, uh, particularly econometrics? What type of things are you doing to push the envelope with that? Well, what's great about the decision sciences team and the broader analytics organization at LinkedIn is that we have people with many different backgrounds. And the toolkit that you need to solve a particular problem really depends on the problem. And the standard set of tools that people use in data science, I think, are things like you know statistics, machine learning, and a, and a solid analytical foundation. But we have uncovered questions that require solutions that are outside some of that standard toolkit that data scientists have. So my background is in econometrics. I have a PhD in economics from Stanford. And when we're asking questions about how one change on the website or one action on the website can indicate a causal change to some other action that we can observe on the website, that's actually a difficult question that tools like machine learning and statistics can solve using observational data. Usually you would, you would roll out a, an A-B test to answer these types of questions, but when the questions become very subtle and maybe not simply solved by an A-B test or would require you to roll out a, a large multivariate test, then it becomes much harder to use the standard toolkit to solve these problems. So there are techniques in econometrics that focus on allowing you to pull out some predictive power of how one variable can affect another variable. Uh, So things like instrumental variable techniques, uh, panel data econometrics, things like that, those are actually very useful for us in answering certain types of questions. An example of one of those questions, I can't really go into the details very much, but an example of one of those questions could be how experiences that people have early on in their membership are predictive of their future engagement on the website. If you think about it for a minute, you can see there's some sort of confounding there of correlation and causation in that people who do something early on in their membership and are also highly engaged later on in their membership there's something about them that can be correlated with both of those events. It just could be that they're the kind of person who just really gets it. But panel data econometrics essentially allows us to use some techniques where you observe people over time in a longitudinal way, and you can control for these types of things. Definitely a technique that I think is not used often in data science toolkit, but has been very useful for answering some questions on LinkedIn. Scott, it's obvious that you guys are moving way beyond traditional relational database techniques. What about SQL, MapReduce, and implying some of the higher-end analytics? I think for us, in terms of what's necessary, it really depends on the problem. From the analyst perspective, we use relational databases. We're currently migrating to a Teradata EDWH, and there are going to be some questions that are just going to be more easily answered in a relational database environment. And there might be situations where it might be quicker for you to iterate in that relational database environment. But at the same time, there are questions that we ask that, for example, might um, utilize our social graph, right, and how all of our members are connected to each other. And thinking about a problem like that, that's actually difficult to analyze in a relational database. So for some of our bigger problems, we are using Hadoop and sort of the layers on top of Hadoop to access Hadoop like Pig or Hive. Scott Nicholson, Senior Data Scientist for LinkedIn. This will be a great talk at Partners, and you should definitely attend it. Some real, real cool stuff that they're doing uh, with big data and analytics and a great team of data scientists. Scott, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, John.